Hey all, and welcome back to Kingdom Hearts 3. Now they just suddenly decide to give the uh, the Gigas this random physics-defying thing that absolutely no toy ever should have, ever. I mean, listen, we, we live in a society where Barbie, they made a Barbie once, where it would roller skate and create, like, sparks, right? And people got concerned about that. What a Barbie roller skate in a bowl of gasoline. <laughs> God damn. That's extreme Barbie. Well, there are yeah, so given the Gigas like gravity power, is a little bit too much, I think. Oh, let's just chalk it up to, you know, it being affected by the dimensional convergence or some shit. And I can't believe I'm describing it a Toy Story plot thread in that regard. You know, that brings up a good point. I was actually thinking about this because obviously, you know, with, um, in the series, darkness is being represented as this very kind of weird force for that. Like, let's say, let's say I've embraced darkness. Do not make a joke. Okay. All right. L let's say I've embraced darkness. Wow, darkness is great. I am darkness's fan. What do I get out of this? It just seems like for people who embrace darkness, they just get superpowers, right? Like they can make like shock waves, and I think they're like stronger or something. It's very nebulous as to what accepting darkness will actually get you. Now, what I think is that Nomura, having no sense of subtlety whatsoever, compares light and darkness to the light and dark sides of the Force, except it's more anime for that. But I wanted to know from you what you think you, you get when you decide to embrace darkness. Okay, I'm a fat lad. I'm going to bring it back down to a food analogy. You have a lovely can of soda. The soda tastes great, and it gives you a little bit of a buzz. At the same time, it kind of rots your teeth over a long period of time, and uh, maybe you should... Um, Maybe switch to water and whatnot instead, lest the uh, the shit inside it do horrible things to your insides. That's basically what darkness is. Darkness is Pepsi. Darkness is indeed Pepsi. Yes, the uh, the Xehanorts have Pepsi Max coursing through their systems. See, when you join the organization, all they have is Pepsi products. You know, you can't. Go, you have to like go to a different world just to get Coke. Like, I gave up my body. I became like a nobody who gets to, I don't know, have like lightning powers. Can I have a Coke? Is Pepsi okay? I can't fucking believe I joined the dark side for this. It's just ridiculous. I mean, I, I hope, I hope Master Xehanort pays good benefits, um, considering the fact that you've embraced this nebulous darkness to help him do shit with Kingdom Hearts and form the, the Kai Blade and fucking conquer the world or turn it into another world or get a good parking spot. I, I At this point, I'm not really sure what he wants to do anymore. Oh, no, no. <laughs> because I'm, I'm just he's saying. trying to bring back Kingdom Hearts so he can also bring back Vanilla Coke. That's all it is. There's legit Vanilla Coke you can buy now, though. Like, I, I can literally go to a store and buy Vanilla Coke. It's a thing, again. Well, maybe they discontinued it on Destiny Islands, where you came from. That's true, because apparently, and this is something I learned, and trust me, we're not doing anything important. Apparently, based on the region you're at, you can actually have some sodas be not available. Because I was in New York, and I don't, and I, in that area, they don't have Pepsi Max, actually. And I like Pepsi Max, it's a vice of mine. But, yeah, apparently they don't have it, and that can depend based on the region. And it's so weird that they do this sometimes with, like, I can understand niche products, but, like, sodas and, like, really wide stuff, things like that, limiting it to particular regions. It's just odd. I don't know. This is the stuff I'm thinking about when we're fighting in a ball pit. That's fine, mate. I'm just having a ball over it. Don't worry about it. I didn't actually do that. Um, I actually, I hunted through the balls to find this particular treasure chest. I didn't know you could interact with that. You, you heard it first, guys. You hunted through the balls to find the treasure. Did you find what you were looking for in the end? Yeah, too bad they were all small and hard to see. Oof. Jesus. All right, let's uh, tool up and go oh. to work. That was a very close-up Sora. Oh, hi, I'm Sora. How you doing? We're this close now. I'm Sora, and welcome to Disney Channel. Oh my god. Okay, let's just make it more chaotic. Let's tack the frame rate even more. I do agree with what you said earlier about the different set pieces. Fighting in a ball pit is actually pretty fun. Like, I like ball pits. Um, obviously, now we cannot go into them ever again because people shit and do drugs in them. But ball pits are fun by nature, so fighting in one is pretty cool. I love your reasoning for why you can't go into ball pits. It's like it's it's very it's very logical, but you left out the part where we're, we're like thirty year old man children, and you know they're designed for kids. I guess, but I mean I'm more man-ish than you. I think I don't know. I've never met you physically. 
over the internet, I assume you're a voice. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that, like, be some real shit? Like, we finally meet up in, like, IRL, and I'm, like, fucking house from Fallout. Just a completely different dude than what I expect, yeah. Ah, a handy dandy gigas just waiting for me, thank you. I forgot about the green ones. I don't remember what the green one's uh, special ability is, actually. I think they're just the same as any of the others, mate, to be perfectly honest with you. Actually, I think it might be the lighting, yeah. I'm not really sure. Yeah, that's definitely looking like a blue arm, though. Blue is green, don't you know? It's basically the same wavelength. Now, what we gotta do here is, same thing as everything else in Kingdom Hearts, really, destroy Heartless, and then the way will be opened. Thankfully we can't flow motion up to the ceiling and get to where the Corridor of Darkness actually is, otherwise this whole admittedly pretty fun section would be uh, pretty moot, as it were. But uh, as it is, you get to go around all the different parts of this fun land, which kind of reminds me of Discovery Zone. Did you ever have a Discovery Zone in America? We've had Discovery Zones. I never got to go to one. Um, I'm trying to think of the closest equivalent. You guys have to understand, I was sheltered as fuck as a kid. So a lot of the fun stuff you guys had, I didn't. The closest I can tell, I can compare it to is like a Chuck E. Cheese. Even then, like, I went to, I went to Chuck E. Cheese like one time for somebody's birthday party. I bought him a present. They never told us where the party was. Eventually my mom got fed up and we went home and we got to, I got to keep what I had bought for this person. <laughs> nice, no, what was it? Uh, it was just a bunch of shitty cars, I wasn't really thinking. But this is like the closest thing I can equate it to. These days it has to be Dave and Buster's because obviously I can't be having fun with bright colors. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a ball pit but instead of like greens, blues and reds it's just like greys and blacks. I wish Dave and Buster's had a ball pit. Yeah, they have so many fucking shooting games and listen I don't mind a shooting game or two. They can be fun but that's almost all they are. There's like a Pac-Man game I think there's a Mario Kart that's like it. They don't really have any fighting games, any other arcade games, and this is actually a pretty great reference here. I was surprised. Yeah. It's a fucking cactar. That's great. And probably the only Final Fantasy thing in this game. Nope, there's more. There's constellations that you can find in uh, the coming ship sections. Oh, that's true, yeah. And the Moogles, obviously. But other than that, um, still a pretty neat cameo. Just want to like point this out before we get a uh, Hellfire comms is garbage and this is why video. We know that we called the Moogles Koopos in an earlier part. It was the first recording session of a new playthrough and I don't know, my mind wasn't there. I'm sorry. And I'm just following Tom's lead, thus absolving me of any blame. I hate you so much. See, this is what's going to push me to go to the dark side, not the fucking soft drinks. Yeah, I mean, like, you'll just get this nebulous power of darkness. It's just like, you're, you're, you're in the darkness now. You have superpowers, I guess. Is, is, I'm going to ask you a, a piercing question here. Do you have a, a word calendar, a word a day calendar? Because nebula seems to be coming up too much in a single party. Um, I don't have a life. Does that count? It's not really the same thing, but it is more depressing and thus hilarious. Yeah, that's just as long as it's not affecting you, right? <laughs> Come, Woody, from the Toy Story franchise, we must enter the dark corridor. <laughs> I've spoken with Obama, and he knows where the Chaos Emeralds are. <laughs> then Obama's inside, like, well, hey, I joined the darkness. I don't know why I gave him that voice, that's clearly not Obama. Fucking Yogi Bear, that's who that is, I just remembered. <laughs> Yeah, Yogi Bear. As you knew, he got the Chaos Emeralds and became Super Yogi Bear. Incredibly powerful. We have to defeat him. Hey, Joby Dan, we gotta tax all the picnic baskets. Please don't make a Hanna-Barbera crossover video again. <laughs> uh, oh, Jesus, Buzz! This is one of the most interesting scenes in the game, and I will leave it at that. Zaynort, what do you want with my friend? Well, uh, you know, I'm just pouring darkness up his asshole. I could go through the math, but the asshole is just much more funny, especially on a toy. This is pretty great, young Zaynor. Hey, next time you're going to pump something full of darkness, why don't you pump it full of somebody that actually has actual fucking weapons? He has the laser in this world, I suppose, but is it only in this world? I guess. Wrong. Distance doesn't matter. Thank God we had an anime protagonist on our side, otherwise Woody and Buzz would have been fucked. You know, we could strike rate him at any time, guys. You I know he's got the time power shit, but he's probably not expecting it out of nowhere. There's a subplot on Mabu. And Noli. 
No. It's very clearly your nad. What? Your friends are your power? I love that. He calls him out. How very true. Yeah, it's basically, well, this. Nuh uh. Uh huh. What? The darkness of being alone is a power even greater. Oh my darkness god. The, the power of unique. being an emo is amazing. You should try all the leading. Oh, here we go. I don't care. Put Buzz back the way he was, then get lost. Got him. What toy? Yeah. I am a toy. His power level is oh, surging. It's immense. Oh! Is no one's ever dun, ha, da, 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 Oh, he's so fucking... Oh. I'm sorry. I gotta calm down. It's cool. You don't need to swear about it, Tom. You're a 30-year-old man. And oh, God, there's sorrow with Woody. I've waited years. Loneliness only made Woody and Buzz's connection stronger. I think they gave a lot of this bit to the Toy Story world because so many people wanted it, and it'd be a good way to conclude the world. Absolutely. Yeah, and the cynical side of me is like, oh, it's because it's the first world in game, in the game, and they want to, like, make a lasting impression, but hey, it fucking works. I mean, Woody's power being this immense to this felt of darkness is pretty fucking nuts. Yeah, if he was a lantern, he would be a green lantern, for sure. And a rare good burn from Sora as well that I really appreciate. Oh, well that's just inconvenient. WTF. Again, you could strike raid him, do magic. I would've just shot a fireball and then followed it up with a combo. Yeet! Whee! There's that Wii again. It doesn't have to be Spider-Man, but... Giddy up, partner! We gotta get this wagon train a moving. I can't believe they're dead. Oh, they're fine. Is this Aqua's theme? What's I doing here? Feels more thematic Wait, here, I think. I hmm. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't think it's Aqua's theme. Feel free to correct me in the the chat and whatnot, as it were a Twitch stream. Oh, Buzz, you fell to darkness, but it's fine. This is your redemption arc now. Can you help us with Master Young Xehanort over here? It's just we're kind of stuck. Please, that's my older self's name. I'm Young Xehanort. Of course, I'm sorry for the confusion. <laughs> Donald, you were doing fuck all to help here. Look at that, look at that hammer, it's barely even connected. Donald, why aren't you casting magic like a mage should? So, even empty puppets can be given strong hearts. Look at this shit, oh god almighty! I have to remember that. Remember this, our hearts will always be connected to Andy's. No matter what you do... Here comes burn number two! ...something you'll never understand. Because you're hollower than any toy. Oh, Just do that gif where that guy's like, oh, oh, as he walks past <laughs> and all of his friends are like, oh. Give you a parting gift to play with. Here is a boss for you, because it's not me. Find the hearts joined to yours. Magic doesn't exist in these cutscenes, remember that, guys. Also, what what was the point of Young Zayno telling him to do that? Was he subconsciously doing that? Was the light within him telling him to do it? It doesn't matter. We're going to fight a UFO. So, this is an interesting boss, and I'll, I'll repeat what I said earlier. Um, the boss theme is really fucking majestic yep. for this early on. I mean, no, it's cool. I really like the boss themes in this game. But this guy's kind of annoying because you can't really reliably flow motion up to him. You have to do this. You have to walk on and then do your magic jumping up there attacks for that. He flies around. You want to get on his head and attack this way. Uh, don't use Mao well, like I said. doesn't really work. Uh, if you use his these specials, it will knock you back down to the ground, so you will have to climb back up again. Um, he mostly moves around, fires some projectiles, does these dashing attacks. It's not too bad. Really, the challenge is just getting to him consistently. He does have an, an, one attack that did annoy the shit out of me when he cast it, though. Don't really have anything to add on to that. You can block a lot of his attacks and whatnot. If you have double arrow guns at the ready, uh, this can help mitigate a little bit of the uh, the distance quibbles and whatnot. But I would say for like the first proper boss of the game, not including the Titans and whatnot, this was a pretty good way to conclude the Toy Story world thematically. I would have loved a boss fight with Young Xehanort, and honestly the game does suffer with that, leaving all the organization fights until the end of the game. But as is, I'm pretty happy with this. Like you said, uh, doing the um, 
using the gun is actually a pretty good way to get close to him and you know keep attacking from range. Uh, but when you get on top, definitely switch to something that probably prioritizes strength, so you can just beat the hell out of his head. And look out for that counter as well. It's gonna get you. Here comes the Rocket Ruckus after this. Yeah, first up we gotta do this one. This one not so reliable. Rocket Ruckus is pretty good because again it can easily get you up there and just hit him with the spin over and over and then fire that projectile in his face, which is, does some good damage. He's outside the world's boundaries now. Oh, he's back in. It's fine. Here we go. You're not the only one with rockets, baby. You really should have commented a little more. I mean, I, I just have to mention, I haven't really looked that closely to the background until this point. Look at that! That is a hell of a skybox, I'm going to tell you now, with all the toys floating in the background for that. That's just, that's nuts. And again, this is way too intense for a Toy Story boss, and yet they go all out on this guy. That's why it's great, man, because they respect Toy Story so much as to give it a Kino finale. This is the attack I'm talking about. Uh, he'll throw up this electric fence and then kind of try to squish you during it. I don't have a really good way around this attack. I couldn't figure it out, but probably what you did there, um, swinging up to him with your air attacks and getting on his head is probably the best way you're going to be able to dodge it. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, trying to abuse invincibility frames as well that you uh, get from like you know transitioning to new forms and whatnot. And again, you can store finishes when uh, you switch keyblades, so definitely make use of that if you're struggling. And they were able to clarify, actually, for us in the comments, that even though you can turn off the cutscenes, you do still get the damage effect, from what we can tell. And, and I like this, you're just fucking blasting him right in the face, just fuck you! <laughs> Alright, now we're gonna go to Tornado Mode. Uh, not one of my favorite modes. The fucking floor is one of those little city maps that you got in, like, play school and whatnot. Now for this, um, for this particular attack and the one where he tries to dunk on you, just block that. Um, dodging is a little unreliable. You can you can dodge this one pretty good. It's just the dunk one that's a little hard for me to dodge, so I just block it. Better is my oh Jesus, a tornado of toys. Didn't we already fight a tornado? Yeah, we did, but you know it was so nice. We'll do it twice. Yeah. And some good results here, though. Uh, this run is looking better than when I fought the guy, because again, I... That was my first go. You've already obviously had experience with how this guy fights. And um, this was a separate take, as you saw by my not-so-subtle edit back there. So, you know, I, I tried to get to, you know, the ones looking as good as possible, because sloppy gameplay equals sloppy commentary. You like that block? Hmm. And another, you know, thing I wanted to mention, the flow motion is good here to kind of run up the buildings, because they can give you a little ways to, if they're close enough to the boss, it'll let you get up there and try to hit the head. He's almost done. He, he's just delaying the inevitable at this point. Alright, Goofy, let's fucking do this. Man, this better kill him. This better kill him. Yeah! There we go. Oh, delish. Thank you, thank you. So, mate, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate Toy Box overall? Hmm. More of a 1 to 5 scale, because I find that easier to work with. I'm going to give it a uh, 7 or 8. Um, it does have a lot of great moments. Uh, boss is pretty good, although a little weird for that. Music is fantastic. Um, again, they went all out making sure Toy Box was super memorable, and it is. Uh, a few little quibbles here and there, but over overall, very good world, I think. I'd give it, I, I'd give it a low nine. There's only like a couple of things that annoyed me, like trying to find the correct uh, place to progress, like later on. But other than that, uh, great original story, character interactions are fantastic, set piece is really fun, music is amazing, visually it looks gorgeous. So yeah, this is definitely a high point of the game. It's too bad not every world can be like this, um, especially with the other Pixar worlds that people were looking forward to. But we'll get to it as we go. Thank you, Ham. You fucking stereotyping bitch. They synchronize that. Vana will not be reached. <laughs> Donald Duck will remain in purgatory. That's a bit weird, but okay. Huh? After all the adventures we've had, your cannon. <laughs> Get used to it. Not quite ready to say so long. We'll see you in Toy Story 4, sir. <laughs> so, if you magic guys. can bring a fork to life I'm and cause it to I be like a toy so with conscience Please and sentience, I guess it can also explain how Sora, Donald, and Goofy 
come to this world dressed up as toys and fight a fucking magic man and his demonic UFO. <laughs> a magic man, fuck off. Especially since Woody's always getting in trouble. Yeah, Woody is a bit of a rapscallion, even if he's meant to be the leader or whatnot. Yeah, they, they both have straw for brains. Donald, you ain't dependable as shit. Goofy's the dependable one. Look at him. He raised the sun on his own and everything. This is true. I, if I had to, if I had to get one of these characters to do something dependable, I would go to Goofy because he probably has his shit together. Oh yeah, let's just stay in this nightmare realm. Who cares if Andy comes back safe and sound? As long as we have our friends, we'll be fine. That's not what they're saying. I'm just exaggerating for comedic LP funsies. And he's still right here with us. In in the stomach? Where is the stomach on a toy? I don't really think about that, and neither should you. <laughs> Probably for the best. <laughs> yeah. All right, boys, let's wrap this shit up. So Sora, are you going after the guy in the black coat? Sorry, I didn't realize there was more dialogue first. It's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna go find him and swing That's at okay. him ineffectually like because I did last time. Yeah, well, that was a cut scene. We'll see how he handles things IRL. Fight me in video game, not IRL, and see what it's like. You, you're the idiot. So let us become a part of yours. Oh, what are you so wholesome? I fucking love Toy Story. Off you go to infinity and beyond. Yes, he said it. He said the thing, guys. This world was fantastic. I've got nothing but good things to say about it. But, uh, you know, they may have front-loaded the game with uh, Great World, so uh, let's continue on, and let's keep our minds open and willing to change, shall we, Hell Dragon? Specifically, Hell Dragon here. No, you may not rebut me. It is the end of the part, and I am talking here. So we'll see you next time when we uh, have a little bit of an interlude, as it were. Cutscenes ahoy, gentlemen and ladies. See you next time.